Have you ever been intimidated by a car? Now I've driven McLaren 720s's and Audi R8's, no problem. But the car I'm driving today, the new Porsche 911 Turbo S, gets my palms a little bit sweaty. We're talking 641 brake horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque, zero to 62 in 2.7 seconds. And what better way to learn the new 911 Turbo S than on a circuit that's covered in mud and is about as tight as an indoor go-kart track. So let's kick things off with a launch. This thing will go from zero to 62 in 2.7 seconds. So let's put launch control on. What I need to do is whack it into Sport Plus, foot on the brake, foot to the floor, and go. So, let's talk the stats. We've got a 3.7 litre, although it's badged as a 3.8 litre, twin turbo flat six engine, producing 641 brake horsepower, 800 newton meters of torque, which is sent to all four wheels. However, Christ, that's fast. So it's four wheel drive. However, most of the time, 100% of the power is sent to the rear wheels. It's only when you need the front wheels to come in, such as when you're doing a standing start, it'll send up to 500 newton meters to the front axle. upset a lot of people when they introduced the 992 generation 911 because they moved away from analog dials to part digital part analog like a hybrid system so on the left i've got a digital screen that reads the clock and also the speed on the right is another digital screen where i've got fuel and also some details about the turbos and also a more accurate readout of how far i've got in the tank but in the center i've got a digital 
rev counter, which is just like you would have on any other 911. Just so you know, I love digital instrument clusters and I really like the way that this has been laid out. It's really clear. This is one of the sharpest screens I've ever seen, but that central rev counter is just so iconic and it looks really good even on this newer model. But those aren't the only screens you get. You also get a massive touchscreen infotainment system in the center of the dashboard. Again, super easy to navigate. Anything that you get from the Volkswagen Group is always top notch. And I think exactly the same thing of here. It's really sharp and ultra responsive. And what's really good is that the buttons are quite big and easy to access. So when you're on the road, it's not too distracting when you look over. The rest of the cabin is just what you would expect from a Porsche. It is absolutely gorgeous. The steering wheel is so lovely and wrapped in this beautiful leather. You've also got a small little dial down here to change the different driving roads. You also have this small gear selector in the center console. Some people love it, some people hate it. I really don't mind. It's just there to put it in drive or reverse when you need to. To be honest, there are so many optional extras with a Porsche that your cabin is probably going to look completely different to the one that I've got here. But the good news is the general layout is really intuitive to use, built beautifully, and should we just go and drive this thing again? Let's go. Things become a lot more serene when you're out on the road. What a change of character. This 911 Turbo on track feels like it will rip your head off if you're not careful. But having driven it on the road for a bit, it's just so calm and in true Porsche fashion, it's easy to drive. Who would have thought that under my right foot I've got 641 brake horsepower? I think what's really impressive is that here I am cruising in fifth gear and just the slightest squeeze of the throttle gives you so much pace. But what's impressive is we've got it in normal mode at the moment. It's quite a leisurely build of speed. In that sense, it's a real GT. In fact, it reminds me quite a lot of the M8 Grand Coupe that I was testing recently. And also with the exhaust valves closed. It's really quite quiet in here. Barely getting any noise from the engine whatsoever, just a small whoosh from the turbos. But it really is very quiet. So if you're cruising along, it's not gonna be boomy and unpleasant. Of course, even in normal mode, you can open the flaps in the exhaust by just flicking a switch on the dash. that makes it sound so much nicer. With emission limits being so strict at the moment, even supercars can sound a little bit lame, but it's amazing what manufacturers do to make their cars sound great. This 911 Turbo, sure, it won't scream like a naturally aspirated GT3 RS, but it sounds really good. It sounds like a 911, that's the important thing. What makes the 911 Turbo S is its sheer performance. It is so ludicrously fast in a straight line. And what well, makes me laugh when I'm driving it is how <laughs> it's just as fast as an electric car off the line. I don't know how the hell they did it. But to experience that on the road is almost impossible because if I'm at a set of traffic lights and I activate launch control, I'm gonna be breaking the speed limit in three seconds. It's just so ridiculously fast. And it's the same thing on a B road. It's really hard to feel the chassis at work because this has got a seriously impressive chassis and really good electronics going on to kind of keep the power optimal at each corner of the wheel. We've got anti-roll system as well. So it's always flat, even though it is quite a porky thing. None of that you can really experience on the road without really gunning it. And in England, there's nowhere we can really do that. I do think this makes an excellent GT car. And I know there's a small boot in the front and there's no boot in the rear. You can fold down the rear seats and place a couple of suitcases back there. So there is room if you wanna go for a weekend away in the south of France. 
There is a little bit of road noise, but it's nothing too extreme. It is quite noticeable when you're up at 70 miles an hour. But I think on a road, it really is that feeling of effortless performance and effortless speed. Nothing really phases this whatsoever. To really see what this is capable of, we're gonna to need to take it back to the track. So let's go. The Porsche 911 Turbo S costs £156,000 before you add on extras. That's 56 k more than a Carrera 4S. But this isn't just a Carrera 4S with a bit more power. Let's go find out why. I really didn't think I was gonna come to this conclusion, but the Turbo S just feels so at home on track. Yes, it's really easy to live with on a road, but it's so difficult to extract the car's performance, even in bite-sized chunks. But on a track, there's just so much of the car that you can discover. So one of the things that's actually really standing out to me on track first is the way the all-wheel drive system and torque vectoring works. So, as I mentioned earlier, a standard 100% of the power is sent to the rear wheels, but when you need it, the front axle will come in and give you a bit more grip and a bit more pull. And it's really noticeable when you're going around a corner the car feels light and it feels very rear focused, but then put a bit more power down. And then you can feel this kind of rush of energy from the front axle. The nose lifts up. <laughs> and then you go hurtling towards the horizon. This isn't a light car. It's 1,640 kilos, which is actually 40 kilograms heavier than the old Turbo S. But the car just feels so crazy nimble in the corners. It doesn't feel like a heavy car. It certainly doesn't feel like an ultra lightweight carbon fibre supercar. But I'm not getting that sensation of I'm chucking around nearly two tonnes a performance car and that's partly thanks to the torque vectoring just keeping all the wheels in check and, and making sure you've got optimum power and grip at each corner of the car but it's also the rear wheel steering which is <laughs> seriously impressive it just makes the wheelbase feel like it's super short another thing blowing my mind is the steering this is the best electronic rack I've ever felt in a car. There's such a difference between old hydraulic steering systems and electric units. Something like an R8, the steering just feels completely numb. But in this, it's got a gorgeous amount of weight. Really nice. I can actually feel what the track surface is doing. I've read that Porsche messed up the 991s steering when it went electric but they've really clawed it back with this 992 it's very good sounds good too yeah it sounds really good this is this is a this is a seriously fast car it's actually got 70 brake horsepower more than the old Turbo S, which is a ludicrous jump. Most companies give their car an extra 20 brake horsepower, not 70. And even the base Turbo S, which has got just over 560 brake horsepower, is still a good chunk more than the old car. Should you buy a 911 Turbo S 992 generation? Uh, 
if you had asked me on the road, I would have said no. Because I think as a road car, it's so difficult to exploit what this is really capable of. Now, we often talk with sports cars, if you drive it on the road, you're only scratching the surface. But I think with a Turbo S, you're not even accessing any of its performance. It is so ludicrously fast. But what makes it such an exciting car is how it behaves when you're on the limit and when you're on the higher end of its performance, when you can really tap into that 642 horsepower. So on the road, I would just say get a Carrera 4S. However, what's really impressive about this generation of turbo is that it feels like it's been built for the track as well. I can fully understand if you were to take this onto a circuit, if that's something you were planning on doing, a Turbo S could, could work really well for you because it would drive you to the circuit in complete comfort. It would be so simple to use and it would be relatively fuel efficient. Porsche claims around 23 MPG average. Not too bad when you've got 640 horsepower. And then you could just go and annihilate everything on the track and you could have a lot of fun in this. And then drive home in comfort at the end of the day. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna whack it back into Sport Plus and I'm gonna keep lapping this racetrack all day until the fuel runs out. <laughs> 